Um, we've taken account of the family islands um, and uh, maintained the 10 seats that the family islands have, even though the family islands only represent 15 or 16 percent of the total population of Bahamas and uh, of the, and the voters, registered voters of Bahamas. They maintain five in Grand Bahama, which again only has about 15 percent of the population. New Providence, which has 70 percent of the population, is one land mass, and so we are seeking to have 23 seats in New Providence. In terms of how the lines are configured, I'm not familiar with details of that. All I know is that the FNM would have drawn equitable and fair lines, consistent with its mandate, to see as many seats as is possible, have an equal number of votes, and where they're not equal, to ensure that the inequality does not exceed a certain percentage. And with that being had to the, to the current voters in New Providence, which is 96,000 as of, as of two days ago, um, 23, 23 seats in the House should produce an average number of voters per constituency of 4,170 or thereabouts voters. And so we'll see the extent to which the FNM and the Commission has been able to meet that mandate. In Grand Bahama, they have nearly 20,000 voters registered, about 20,000. And so they have five seats, Grand Bahama and, uh, and, um, and Bimini. And so we expect that their seats will have an average of 4,000. That doesn't mean each seat will identically have 4,000, but within the range. Um, and that is what we seek um, to do. Um, some names, um, the commission would have recommended some change to them. And uh, in order to reduce the seats by three, you have to eliminate three seats. Um, I don't know where the story came from that's been carried in the newspaper. Could only have been leaked by the PLP as to which seats were eliminated. That is not true. Okay? It's not a true story. But you'll see from the Boundaries Commission report which seats have been eliminated. A number of names have been changed um, for, for constituencies, and there's been a reconfiguration of seats. If the people of the Bahamas have moved, and Nassau have moved to the eastern, south, and western part of New Providence, obviously the seats got to follow the people. Um, they can't stay in the center if the people have moved. That's the reality. Have a good morning. Now, what's your response to PLP claims that the I don't pay. Uh, uh, to the, uh, the what? Now, what's your response to PLP claims that the FNM is trying to save unpopular ministers and decimate <laughs> the PLP areas' strongholds, I guess you could say? Um, I don't believe Mr. Christie was serious about that. He and I had a chat in church the other day. I think he was talking to you all, not to me. He knows better than that. Now, Mr. Prime Minister, my last question is, uh, the PLP seems to take exception with this 38. They're saying that this is going to put a lower number of seats, will put a burden on the, the MPs. Can you respond to that? The change in boundaries in New Providence will mean an average of 500 more voters per constituency in New Providence, an average of 500 more voters. The Bahamas had 38 seats um, from before 1967 up until 1982 I think but certainly from 67 38 seats up before 67 and after 38 seats in the house um, I don't understand what they mean by a strain on MPs the lazy ones among us will always be lazy wouldn't do their job I can't imagine why there'll be a strain for an MP in New Providence to be able to visit his constituents, to be responsive to them. After all, the government gives them at least $1,500 a month to maintain an office and to be available. They can ride around, etc. That's a nonsensical argument advanced by one Fred Mitchell. 